I hope they only get married. Me too. Move out. William Huntington, camp leader. Captain James Allen, U.S. Army. Mm -hmm. I have official United States business. Well, how can I assist you, Captain? I need to speak to Brigham Young. Well, he's not here. I'm in charge in this camp. Would you like to sit down? May we offer you anything? I've come under the direction of President James K. Polk to organize an army of the West in our war with Mexico. I'm here to enlist the service of five companies of 100 men each in a period of 12 months. The men must be healthy between the ages of 18 and 45. We'll march from Fort Leavenworth to California to secure and fortify the territory. Well, I'm not sure we're going to be able to help you, Captain, but uh, we will notify Brigham Young. Miss Huntington, this is an offer from the President of the United States. And it's an opportunity for you to send some of your people west at the expense of the U.S. government. I understand, Captain. Thank you. Thank you. You're a bragging bunch. You only need 500. The government didn't protect our rights. Now they want us to fight a war with Mexico. This is one man who will not be going. I wonder what Brigham Young will have to say about this. We await any instructions as to how to best deal with this new development. Your servant in the Lord, Wilfred Woodrum. Sending our men to war? I sent a message to President Polk, requesting a contract, offering to build way stations westward along the Overland Trail as a means to pay for our migration west. I assume this is his answer. How could we send 500 of our men? What about their families? We would organize to care for them. It would help financially and get many of our men roughly 800 miles from our destination. The battalion could earn several thousand dollars. We've pled with the Lord to help us find a way to move west. I believe this is his answer. So Captain Allen and Brigham Young spent the next three weeks going camp to camp to recruit the 500 men. I am here to recruit five companies into the U.S. Army of the West. The enlisted will receive pay and rations, and will be entitled to all the benefits and comforts of regular soldiers of the Army. When discharged to California, you may keep your firearms. Volunteers, come forward. Friends, I know this comes at a difficult time. But I believe the captain's request is an answer to our prayers and a way to help us pay for our trek west. But it will be difficult for the families left behind. They will be provided for. And the Lord bless each of you for your sacrifice. <coughs> the Lord's hand is in this. Ask again, Captain. Volunteers, come forward. I will go. Sacrifice isn't easy, but we knew we could trust God, and we knew he had given us a real prophet in Brigham Young. Are you going to enlist? 
I don't want to, son, but I feel like it's the right thing to do. Then I'll come with you. So for us, making the decision to volunteer at Brigham Young's request came down to a question of faith in Jesus Christ. Just like that. You know, I think we need a few more carrots. Philander, what's happened? The army captain returned. No. How can you leave me? The children? The captain returned with Brother Brigham. <coughs> Keep stirring him. Brigham said this was an answer to prayer. A way to bless the saints. The Lord will watch over you and the children. And you? And me too. You know, I don't expect enough to provide for you to my return. I just don't see why the women have to stay back and worry when we can just as easily march alongside the men. Then, come with me. Carry a gun. <coughs> Too young. Wait, I, I can play the fiddle. You're not going to be bringing any fiddle. Can you write? Uh, yes, sir. It'll be my aid. Yes, sir. Tell your mother. Yes, sir. Thank you. It wasn't easy, but in the end, just under 500 men volunteered, and almost 80 women and children accompanied them. We enlisted, trusting God had a purpose in having us join the army, but that remained to be seen. Funny thing about faith, sometimes you need it to make a decision, other times you need it after. Thank you. 
called the bugs and mosquitoes, a lot of these men, they got really sick with the disease that they knew as congestive fever, but what we know today as malaria. We were pretty fortunate, though, that some women were able to come along on the journey as well, because these women got health care for people when they got sick and prepared food, and 20 of them were actually hired on as laundresses. So they would bring along their own scrub boards on the journey so that they could do all the laundry by hand. So it was a pretty big job, and they didn't get paid very much, but it was a huge help for the journey, and they probably wouldn't have been able to make it without these women. And so, oh, well, speaking of laundresses, hi, Martha. Hi, everyone. I'm Martha Sharp. Did you just arrive? Yeah, we all just got in from Council Bluffs. Perfect timing, actually. I was just telling them how much laundresses like you would help on the journey. What the? I don't think Martha can hear us. Everyone just say, hi, Martha. Hi, Martha. Hi, Martha. Oh. Well, I'm glad you all made it. Thank you. We are, too. You missed all the excitement. What excitement? Charlie Colton. You remember Flanders' nine-year-old son? Yeah. He just wandered in. What? Since you ran away to catch up with his pa. And Captain Allen, I mean, Colonel Allen, said he could stay since we're too far to take him back. 